yourself as Mary Jo is um, talking. Oh, good. Great. All right. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome back to yoga on Thursdays. Um, this is a really great time for me and for all of us to kind of take some time out. A lot of what um, I talk about when I teach yoga is um, is just really carving out time to nurture yourself and to be in a place where you're not um, you're not demanding too much of your body um, and that sounds a little bit counterintuitive because of course we're stretching and we are we are doing things we're challenging our bodies um, but we're trying to do it with attention without tension so if you can kind of think of that throughout the practice that you're giving attention to your body um, and you're, you're attempting to do it without creating tension because uh, a lot of times when we exercise or we do something um, we might actually end up, for me anyways, I, I know this to be true, if I do too much, especially in a spinal cord body, it kind of comes back at me and it, it's usually almost worse than if I hadn't done anything at all. So my goal is to not have you um, create any sort of situation where your body is not really enjoying or benefiting from what we're doing. So um, I'm really relying on you to give me feedback about that because I appreciate it and I also um, I recognize that we're all at very different levels, so I want us to be uh, cognizant of the fact that you need to work with where your body's at. Um, and the second thing I, I really want to um, hone in on today and maybe for the next few sessions is to, is to really think about yoga in the concept of what makes it different from maybe other modalities is that we are really conscious, that we're being mindful. And we're gonna, I'm going to talk a bit more about mindfulness in a minute, but we're, we're thinking, we're not thinking, we're, we're attending to what we're doing in a, in a bit of a different way than maybe when we just go and do a workout. Uh, and, and that attending involves us coupling breathing and consciousness with movement. So that's what makes yoga somewhat unique is that we're, we're attempting to really actually, um, almost like a, a conductor in an orchestra, um, create this beautiful flow with breath and body together. So um, especially right now with what we're thinking about and, and having to deal with with this virus and you know various other different things that that implicates to our bodies like fear and maybe a bit of uncertainty and holding, the breath and mindfulness become a real um, important juncture for us to actually uh, create safety in the body and deal with what the nervous system is dealing with all the time that we kind of sometimes can ignore for an able-bodied person really easily, less so when we have a spinal cord injury because we might get more obvious um, things from holding tension or from being afraid. Um, but the real key to that is actually mindfulness. And that even sounds a bit counterintuitive because, well, if I'm more mindful about my pain or my fear or my spasticity, doesn't that bring more attention to it? And in actual fact, our bodies, um, especially the nervous system in, in everybody's body, really functions on a um, who, what, when, where, how. And the order of that for our bodies is where am I and am I safe? That's what our primitive brain is doing all the time. And so, as you know, if you're in a wheelchair and <clears throat> you have compromised nervous systems, <clears throat> excuse me, that am I safe is not always that um, reliable uh, because we might not feel safe all the time in our particular positions and with our bodies. So being able to go back into that nervous system again and again throughout your day and creating these sort of pauses where, which is really what mindfulness is, it's a pause um, and a pause is really, really crucial. If you think about um, holding tension for any length of time, um, what happens is the nervous system starts to then associate that and begin to um, kind of function from that level so that we're always functioning from this level of fight or flight, I've got to protect. And when you move into a sort of a, a, a sensory modality where you're actually tuning into your senses and re-establishing for your nervous system a place where you're safe, then that kind of vigilant hyper flight, um, hyper vigilance of, of fight or flight actually can rest 
and we can then move into this gorgeous place of where the parasympathetic system takes over and we get into this more ease uh, place of stability and that's really the benefits of mindfulness and then ultimately of yoga doing yoga with that mindfulness then gives us that place to maybe stretch in and, and relax some of those tight places with consciousness so that then the body remembers that and it doesn't remember the pain or the holding pattern. So that's the, the kind of short version and the little blip I had to say today about mindfulness and why um, it's so crucial and why mindfulness and conscious breathing make yoga, you know, a different modality for the body and one that is really important and research has proven time and time again the benefits of mindfulness and yoga. So I don't really need to get into that here, but I will say that the Harvard researchers, um, when they um, tested over thousands of people with a phone app to see you know, what they were doing and how they were doing without the day, throughout the day, to essentially measure happiness levels, um, first of all, they found out what they didn't expect, and that was that people are never really present uh, their, their mind and their thoughts are somewhere else and even not inside their body which is really common for most of us um, but the second thing that they found out is that we're happiest uh, when we are most engaged and when we're connected uh, when we're not living outside of our body so um, with that in mind thinking about maybe um, being at a movie where the you know, it's an action movie or it's a real thriller or a scary movie and you're just sitting there at the edge of your seat watching it and everything's tense in your body and your heart's pounding and all that kind of stuff. And just think of pausing that movie and really then becoming conscious of, oh my God, I'm holding my body like this or, oh, maybe I should release this and, oh, look at all the people around me and, oh, I can hear the sounds, you know, in the room now. So really that's kind of what we're doing when we do mindfulness and then we take that mindfulness into yoga practicing and breathing uh, so that then we can really allow our nervous system to, to restore and to feel better. So that's my little spew for the day. So I hope you're all with me on that and I'm gonna um, invite you now to, to just get yourself as in a most comfortable position you can in your chair. We're gonna just start with a little bit of mindfulness together uh, and Mary Jo, I just wanted yeah. to mention to you that we do have one person that's joining by phone. Okay. Um, so when you're describing things, just keep that in mind. They awesome. Can't see you. Okay, thank you. So yeah, um, I, I like to think of a comfortable position as being where my body's aligned. So you um, could do well to think of your feet being below your knees, um, your spine tall, um, your the crown of your head over the base of your spine and as much as possible, creating some sense of stability in that posture. And when you are comfortable and in your position, we'll just start by pulling the shoulders up toward the ears and letting the upper arm bones move back and dropping the shoulders down. And then we'll coordinate that with breath. So inhale, exhale, and down. And let's just do that exhale together um, what I'd like to do when I think of this breath, because I call it the cave breath, the cave woman breath, um, cause I'm in my cave right now. I don't want anybody bothering me. And, and I want to actually, you know, move into my deeper state of being and connected to my body. And so that's why I call it the cave woman breath. Cause I'm kind of doing that. I'm going into my cave and you can think of the cave. I taught you a couple weeks ago, this breath by doing it like that but you can also just think of it as making kind of a cave with your mouth and throat so that when you inhale inhale really deeply and exactly exactly and now do that again with your eyes closed inhale Good, and then do it one more time and really just feel. That's great, good. And now with your eyes closed, allow yourself to, to tune into your physical body. Feel yourself in your chair or standing or sitting on your couch, wherever you are right now, and feel into the support 
that's all around you. You might even just kind of allow yourself to think that that's a really nurturing support, whatever it might be, the backrest, the sense of your seat on your seat cushion, the feeling of your legs deepening into the support of the chair and the foot plate or the floor and keeping your eyes closed, or if that's not there for you, you can have your eyes half open, but don't be looking at anything. The idea here is to go inside. So your internal eye is what we really want to feel into right now. And your internal felt sense. How do you feel? Where's your mind at? Where's your heart at? Where's your body at? And just notice with a real kind curiosity. You can notice what doesn't feel good, but also notice what does feel okay. Maybe the flesh inside the cheeks, you could relax and soften. The back of the throat can broaden, move toward the back of the throat or the tongue toward the back of the throat. You can broaden the palate up at the roof of the mouth. You can allow the space between the brows to really smooth out and to have a sense of ease. The outer corners of the eyes to release into a gentle smile. The flesh on the forehead to soften and spread like butter up towards the hairline and feeling like the brain can even recede a bit back from the skull. Just relaxing your thoughts, even watching your thoughts as you breathe. And then noticing your breath without changing it. Just notice your rhythm with curiosity. Feel the inhale. See if you can feel expansion, perhaps a broadening of the chest and heart, the softening of your back armpits, a smile at the front armpits, and the exhale, you may notice this sense of just deepening. Perhaps you can soften the belly, letting the belly move back toward the spine as you exhale, feeling feeling a deepening or maybe even a sense of stability on the exhale in the pelvic region. Attending to all the sensations in your body with a friendly, compassionate kind of curiosity that has no necessi necessarily um, need to change anything, but really just to notice and to accept, to feel And also notice your sense of time, your sense of space. Do you notice where you are in the room? Do you notice where your mind, where your thoughts are? Are they forward, in the future, back, in the past? In any kind of judgment and just gently bring them back to noticing. Feel the inside of your shoulders and relax them down your back body. Feel again the tongue, relax it to the back of the throat, softening the roof of the mouth. Feel a gentle smile inside your mouth. And just allow that smile to kind of resonate throughout your whole being. And for the moment, know that there's nothing to do or fix. There's nowhere to go or be, but right here. And you can just reaffirm to your body that it's safe that your body breathes and that your body's comfortable. Having that intention to bring that attitude forward as you practice your yoga today. Remembering the shape of your body and just really taking 
an appreciation of the noticing, even the thoughts that you can notice. Imagine being able to watch ourselves thinking, and who is it that's watching? It's this beautiful essence of your being that's beyond thought, beyond judgment. This beautiful place of your being that, that really holds the highest regard for you, for your innate nature. And then when we are ready, we'll all come back into the room, just gradually easing yourself back into presence in the collective part of our our way. Pulling that intention forward to just stay real curious, friendly, and compassionate with yourself as we move into our practice. So before we begin doing a little bit of breathing and then moving that breathing into yoga, uh, are there any questions about breathing? Um, because I'm going to hone in a bit more on breathing today. And I've given you all, if you're returning, and if not, I'm going to go over um, two breathing techniques that I gave you. Um, but before I do, I'm just going to ask if there's any questions. And if there's not, we can carry on. Yeah, you might have to unmute yourselves, or if someone wants me to unmute them, they can just put up their hand if they have questions. Sydney? How do I unmute? You, uh, oh, you were not on uh, mute, but there should be a little microphone uh -huh. um, down on the bottom left. If you click on that, it will mute you. Oh, okay, I see it. Yeah. Perfect, you did it. Mm. Hi Sydney, nice to see you. All right, so for this um, beginning breathing, I'm gonna bring you back to that, that cave breath. So we did it earlier and it's like that. And essentially what you're doing is you're actually kind of tightening a little bit the agatis at the back of the throat to condense the air. So it's like you're you're making your breath into a laser. So you're making it stronger. Um, and it's not easy to do. So don't worry if you don't get it right away. And the idea is that you would probably be doing this with your mouth closed eventually. So it goes like this. You would inhale, let's do it together. Feel your shoulders soften and feel your your belly kind of empty as you do that. We'll do it again. Good. And I don't know if you notice it, but I notice right away it just deepens me. So um, hurrah for that, and I hope you feel that too. Try that before you go to sleep at night. Try it if you feel uptight. Um, but really think of that cave breath as being your friend right now. And the other breath that we did, um, that's so that eventually, I'll just finish, that one works into doing it with your mouth closed and while you're practicing. So it's called the Ujjayi breath. And we're attempting to breathe into the whole body. So let's take a big inhale, a deep, in, deep inhale. And ah, close your mouth halfway through that. So you inhale. And then, ah. good. Do you guys feel that swirling in your mouth? Good. Okay, that's great. So that is a really that's a really sophisticated yoga breath. So congratulations. And secondly, um, keep practicing because of course none of these are going to come just instantly. We need to train the diaphragm and the breathing apparatus and even our mind to kind of relax into these new things. So um, as you do your practice, see if you can do that more and more. So if you come to a, a spot where you're in a stretch and you wanna you know, maybe go a bit deeper, then use that to really feel that you can extend the depth of that position and get a little bit more release into it. I'm gonna close that window because that's a bit noisy. 
So you guys practice that for one more round. Inhale nice and deeply and exhale halfway through. Close your mouth on the halfway point of your exhale. Good. Okay, so that's enough about that breath. The next thing I'm going to do is I, I haven't talked about sound before, but I'm a bit of a proponent of using sound. Um, I used it a lot to regain a lot of function in my arms back and I'm not saying that as a you know an ego thing I'm just really really encouraging you to think about sound as being a really potent ally for us with bodies that aren't fully innervated to be able to get into places where we might not be able to even stretch um, ideally or get the breath into so you know you know as well as I if you've been to a rock concert and you're sitting near the stack that the boom boom vibration of that stacks going right in through your body and so and and you know for that matter science knows it too we use ultrasound to see into the body and feel into the body and give us images um, even now with the in our community if you're in a spinal cord situation electrical stimulation is really actually sending sound and vibration into the body and so we can actually do this ourselves we have this great apparatus called our voice and we have these other great aspects in our body called chambers and so we have this great thoracic chamber we have a cranial chamber and we have a pelvic chamber which essentially are if we took all the tissue away are like chambers where sound can resonate um, so your lungs um, are really really important right now and I want to really bring into this today, because um, I've been practicing with it all week, the sound called HU. Uh, so HU is, is just a vibrational sound. It's nothing, you know, spiritually or only or weird. Um, it's simply a sound that actually resonates the chest region of the body. So when I go into practice with you in a few minutes, we're going to use that sound when we go especially into twists and stuff. And so it, it goes and sounds like this. So when we get there, you'll know. So I inhale deeply. And Terry's probably already put you all on mute, so you don't have to worry about sounding into the, the chorus of the group, but you could if you wanted. Uh, think about that, because it's kind of nice. So we inhale, and we go. So just try it right now in, in no position. And then we're going to be bringing that into the practice today. So inhale. He Perfect. All right. So let's begin where we started off um, last week. And we're going to go back again. And we're going to inhale. Just do that shoulder shrug. Up. Bring the upper arm bones back. And let the arm bones move down. And inhale, coordinate breath to movement. Exhale, upper arm bones back, and then shoulders down the spine. Good, bring yourself into hands on the shoulders position. Take your elbows out to the side. And let's just tip to one side, and go little at first, and then the other. I have to go little, because I'll get a spasm right away. So I'm just gonna tip a little bit. I'm just waking up my spine, and we're going to be replicating in a minute the six movements of the spine. So this movement is lateral, flexion, and extension. So keep your breath moving. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Great. And then bring the hands forward. And now go back a little bit, look up, and come forward and curl. You don't have to fall on your lap here. Just take your chin to your chest and your elbows down, and then go back up. Doing as best you can to feel flexion in this one, and extension when the elbows are up. And you can inhale when your elbows go up, and you can exhale when your elbows come back down. So do that one more time. Inhale, moving into extension, 
and exhale into flexion. Beautiful. Good. Okay. And then with the hands back on the shoulders again, we're going to just twist. So one elbow, left elbow goes back, right elbow comes forward. Then switch, left elbow comes forward, right elbow goes back. If you've got a wheelchair behind you, armrest or backrest, don't worry about the elbow, just stretch the arm out and go back that way. So let's actually do that. We'll place the hand on the shoulder of the front arm, the back arm will stretch it back twisting toward that side. So hand on the shoulder, to the left, right arm, looking back. Coming back to the middle, hand on the shoulder, left arm going back, right elbow coming forward, twisting. Okay, and back to your midline. Good, and then we'll just shake the arms out. So for a minute, just allow yourself, uh-oh. I have a little sign coming up on my computer that says low battery, but I'm gonna try and fix that. So I'm gonna have you guys go into doing 10 circles forward and 10 circles back while I fix my plug-in here. And remind yourself to breathe as you're doing it and oh shoot keep your chin level to the floor keep the top of the shoulders soft and, and then bring your elbows forward when you're finished and make little circles toward the wall in front of you or toward the screen in front of you as it were I think we did it. Yay. Let's just double check. Okay, good. Phew. We've got power. Okay, that's good. And then you're going to take your elbows and point them up toward the ceiling and do 10 circles in that position. That's a harder one because uh, getting the scapula down the spine and the elbows up is not easy but just take your time. If you can't get it up there, what you would do is you would just bring them to wherever you can and imagine them moving up there and maybe stretch your head up a little bit so that you can stretch the front of your spine. Okay, and then shake that out when you're done. Good. All right, let's inhale the right arm up and then take the right arm a little bit further back and then allow the right elbow to come down and bring the hand with it and then allow the elbow to lead the hand in making a big circle so it's like my elbow is actually making the circle here my hand is following so I'm gonna make a big circle if you have a wheelchair um, sort of backrest in your way. You might need to move over a little bit to the side and eventually just make a big circle with that whole arm. Okay, and then leave it in the upright position and take the hand behind the head. Good. And then bring the L. Actually, no, we won't do that right now. Let's go to the other side. Let's start off. So hand to the shoulder and we're going to go up straight up from there and then we're going to go back reach so go all the way around reaching back and again I was just trying to explain this if you're one of those people that the arm can't get all the way up then you would do it like that nice big circles Good. And back and relax. Good. Okay. So we're going to now go into those six movements of the spine and bring them into. Does everybody have a chair in front of you today? Or a desk? Maybe not. Okay. That's fine. 
So if you do, I'll show you the piece that you could do if you have it. And if you don't, don't worry about it. I'll make it so that you don't need it. I'm just gonna turn the screen a little bit that way. Okay. All right. So together we're gonna do the six movements of the spine and we're gonna coordinate those in whatever way is available to you with the breath. So we're gonna start off by pulling yourself forward if you can. And if you're not able to do that, just use your arm rest and just look up and do this. And bring your bottom teeth over your top teeth and extend the front spine. Inhale, exhale, push into your armrest if you have the armrest there, if that's what you're using. If your arms are long, straighten the arms and round the spine fully, pulling the navel back toward the backrest of your chair on the exhale. So we'll coordinate now, inhale, Extend, exhale, round. Inhale, extend. Feel the heart broadening, the collarbones wide. Exhale, feel the navel moving back in towards your spine. Inhale, extend. And exhale, push back. And then let your body come up into upright position with the arms following all the way up. Inhale, and then reach them back. And exhale, take the arms out to the side and down. And back onto your lap. And then with the right hand, we're gonna cross the body over to the outside of the left bent knee. Inhale, pull forward, pull the spine into your body, lift your heart, and exhale towards your left shoulder. Find your breath here before you make the who breath. So inhale, and then exhale, he Feel your lungs. Inhale big, he Feel your lungs. One more time, inhale big, he Good, and then back to your midline. Relax there for a minute and readjust if you need to straighten. And then we're gonna inhale the arms up again, all the way up, take a look up, bring your bottom teeth over your top teeth, extend and exhale, hands to knees or armrest, round the spine. Inhale, pull the spine into your body, fill your heart, exhale, Empty your belly, broaden the back breast. Inhale, last time, extend, look up. Bottom teeth over front teeth, inhaling, exhaling. Big round back, belly empty. And then inhale back to midline, bring the arms up, all the way back. Bottom teeth over top front teeth. Exhale, the arms up to the side, bringing your left arm across your body, over to the outside of the right bent knee. Inhale, scoop your body, pull the spine in, and then exhale towards your right shoulder. Inhale, and exhale smoothly. Keep your breath moving, inhale again. Good, and exhale, huge. Inhale big, exhale huge. You're staying in your position as you're there, twisting to your right shoulder. Sorry, I forgot about you on the phone, now I'm remembering. Um, and inhale as you come back to your midline. So I have to <clears throat> think about you on the phone that can't see. Um, so there we are. I need a little sip of tea. Um, that's the hue breath. And we're going to do that again, but we're going to do it in a different position. We're going to bring... Are you sure it's okay to ask a couple questions about yeah. some of those? Yeah, moves? for sure. So, um, wonder, so this is what I find. Well, two things. One is, should I, because I think I noticed my head going down okay. a lot. Yeah. 
should I like focus my gaze to make sure my head is straight? Would that be helpful? Yes, yeah, it's a really great uh, question. And thank you, yeah. So your gaze, if you can, on the horizon. You're gazing out to the horizon. Yeah. Okay, and, and another I'm, question is like in the inhale part, I sometimes find maybe I inhale too fast and then I'm holding my breath yeah. and then exhaling. Yeah. Um, so can you give me some suggestions about that? Yeah, well, first of all, amazing and great for you for noticing because that's the first step to really learning how to smooth the breath out. And secondly, <clears throat> our tendency is to either do, overdo one, the inhale or the exhale. We tend to be um, gulpers or um, holders. Um, so I would just say just, just be um, maybe um, using a count would be really good for you, like only inhale to the count of three and then make sure you exhale to the count of three as well. So the more you can even out the inhale to the exhale, the better. Um, and even if you can lengthen the exhale, that's even better still. So <clears throat> at this point, you don't want the inhale to be bigger than the exhale, the, ideally. Gotcha. Kay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? So let's do together again some breathing. And we're going to go, do you guys all have a little roll that you can put on your lap? Something like a rolled up towel or a bed pillow. <clears throat> Anything will work. Get it on your lap now because we'll be using that. And I'm going to try and make it so that you can see me for this part. And again, just, um, you know, bear with it if you don't have everything that you really need right now. Um, you can still modify what we're doing. And, and get the same benefit. I'll bring this chair a little closer. And I'm not gonna get um, religious on you or anything, but if you have like a Bible or a book of that size, that's kind of what I would really recommend you being able to use in the future um, <clears throat> so that you can really get your shoulders open. So I'll show you what I have. But you can use, um, you can use pretty much anything for this. So what this will do is this will create an opening in your shoulders. So if you have a book or something and you're able to hold it, I can't use my hands to hold it, but I can use my, my wrists. So that when I go forward onto the chair, can you see me on the chair, Terry? So in the chair position, what, what I'm aiming to have is both of my hands at least as wide apart as that book or that block. And if I have the block in my hands, then I'm gonna get this beautiful release into my shoulders. So that's the ideal. But having said that, you don't have to go all the way down to a chair. You could use your hands on a wall and create that same um, release into the shoulders. So that's ideally where we're gonna go next week. And we would use that block in this stretch as well to really let the whole shoulder girdle relax. And then we would then use that block similarly out here when I go into this release, which is oh so lovely to do. So for today, we're not gonna do it. I just wanted to show you why and what we would be using it for. <clears throat> today we've got a roll on our lap. So we're going to go Marnie, into... Uh, sorry, sorry, Mary yeah. Jo, Marnie uh, asked laying down as a question mark. Yeah, for sure. So laying down, you would still use, still use that block or put something up above your head. If you're not, if your shoulders aren't open enough that you can get your hands flat on the bed, then put something about, you know, this deep behind you so that you can lay your shoulders on that. 
or your arms on that so that your shoulders were open for that. So that's really good. Um, okay, so let's go into a bit of a deeper set of twists now. And we're going to continue to use that same HU breath. So for this twist, with your little something on your lap, you're going to bring your hand onto that something. And then you're going to turn the opposite direction of that arm. So let's, in this case, say you, your right hand, elbow's on your lap. You're going to turn to the left. Use your um, left arm, either on your backrest or on your chair, to really push yourself around. If you want to take this deeper, just look at me for a second, then you would go like this. You would put that left hand on top of the right, and you would get into a really beautiful deep twist, which gets into all these lower muscles in the lower back. So this is the posture, and this is the modification. And if you're on a phone, what we've done is we've taken our right elbow onto the middle of the bolster that's on our lap, and we've twisted toward the left with the torso. We've laid the right hand flat so that it's the same as the roof above it, and then we've placed the left hand on the right to create a triangle between the two elbows. And ideally, you're looking between that triangle through the upper left elbow. Inhale big and exhale huge. Stay there. Inhale big and exhale huge. Nice deep twist here. Some of you might need two things on your lap to make that really approachable. Huge. So you're staying in there. One more breath. H U sound on the exhale and then inhale to come back out. So yeah, some, some people might find that that's too deep and it's too much strain. So in that case, you would add a little bit of ammunition to your lap and put something else on your lap like another bolster, another towel, even a book. And then we're going to inhale, plant the left elbow onto that. We're going to then twist, keeping the right arm sort of balancing the body and giving the body stability, keeping you from falling over to the, to the left side too much so that your body, your center of your spine is still in the middle. And then you're going to twist really deeply toward the right shoulder, placing, if you are able, the right hand on top of the left, making a diamond with your elbows, keeping that back arm. If your back arm is on the backrest of your chair or the armrest, use it to push your torso around to get a bit deeper into the twist. Yeah, good. Okay. Time. Right, so is there a way that you can like back really far away and show it? Um... Sure. Because Cheryl's having a hard time. She wants to see your position, like, waist level. Okay. Tell me when I'm there. Is that good, Cheryl? You can nod if that's... Yeah. She says that's good. Okay. So, for everybody, let's go together then. We'll go inhale your left elbow onto that block, and then you're going to twist. Your, your right arm is just supporting right now and helping you into the twist. And then eventually that right hand, if you're stable, can come on to the left and you create a diamond with your left and right elbow. And you're looking up into the upper elbow. Relaxing the back of the neck. The chin is toward the, the throat. And you could use that HU breath on the exhale. So it's huge. And then inhale to come back to your midline. Good work, everybody. So those are really deep twists. So we're going to go back and do um, a, a nice twist without too much depth. But this time, really pay attention to how far you're going with your breath. So we'll inhale the right arm up. I'm just going to move back a bit so everybody can see. Inhale the right arm up. Exhale, bring the right arm forward. Take it to the outside of your left knee. 
and pull your spine into your body right there, first of all. Then on your inhale, your next inhale, inhale and then twist toward your left shoulder. Use your back hand on your wheel or your armrest to really move your torso, especially from the navel toward the back. And now use your hue breath, inhale and then hue. Feel your body moving. Inhale again and hue. And then inhale one last time. Hue. Stay where you are. Bring your eyes only back. Eyes to the middle of the room. Just your eyes. And then go back now with your eyes and inhale big and twist a bit deeper and stretch into the twist a bit more. Hue. Good. And then relax and come back to your midline. And give a little shake on the hands. And let yourself just roll forward over your roll on your lap, making your spine round like a ball. Tuck the chin. Do the cave breath when you get to the bottom. So make your, your cave breath sound at the bottom there. Tuck the chin. Use your hands to push you back up and let your body, your spine come up one vertebrae at a time, elbows in towards your rib cage. Use the inhale to help you back up slowly. Good, and then inhale the left arm up along that trajectory. Exhale the left arm to the outside of the right bent knee. Pull your spine into your body on the inhale. Lift the heart, exhale. Right hand goes back to the back of the armrest or the tire and you're keeping your body, your torso as level, your shoulders as level to the floor as possible. So your right shoulder should not dip down too much. You should be able to pull your armpits even and use the navel to twist. Big breath in and exhale. Hew. And again, inhale and hew. Last one. We'll look toward the midline, inhale, and then bring the eyes back, and hew. Good. When you're ready, come on back to your midline. Great. All right, so it's almost time to get it, it is time to get into our closing sequence. So let's find ourselves back into a nice, comfortable sitting position and whatever works for you. Um, this is gonna be a guided meditation. So unlike Shavasana a little bit, you're kind of going back into mindfulness, but we're gonna couple that with your breath now. So find a place where you can just really comfortably relax into your chair. Maybe you could close your eyes. That feels comfortable to you. Remember to get whatever supports you need. I like to have something on my lap just to hold my hands on so they feel supported. Good. And then allow yourself with your eyes closed to let your spine be tall, to let your body be grounded and centered. As you relax, slowly deepen your breath. So think about just breathing a bit deeper, not hard or not straining, just deepening it. So there's no, no edginess to it. And as you deepen the breath, see if you can notice the qualities of the inhale and the exhale again. So what does the inhale do? What does it feel like? What does the exhale do and how does that feel? as you pay attention. And if you have the intention to make your breath as smooth and as even as possible, now don't make it too deep. Just allow it to be smooth and even. So find a place where your, your metronome of your little breathing rhythm is in its natural place. 
and then for a moment just allow yourself to visualize the inhale as vitality as the inspiration that it is and allow yourself to feel and maybe give the quality to the exhale of stability and ease and do a couple more breaths like that just inhale to vitality to the life force to inspiration inspire a breath and the exhale to deepening to stability to a sense of ease and continuing to just watch your breathing do that for a couple more rounds kind of really just feeling into the beautiful quality like a wave in the ocean this beautiful return of vitality back to the shore of your being and then this releasing this retracting taking all of the debris and the garbage away and just releasing it out and that's your breath that's really the power and the beauty of breath and you know the difference between life and death is just breath <laughs>